Hi, my name is Denise Willis, and today I'm discussing the papers on mechanical insufflation exufflation that were published in the journal in 2021. I'm a research respiratory therapist at Arkansas Children's Hospital and a section editor for the journal. I do not have any conflicts of interest. Mechanical insufflation exufflation, or MIE for short, simulates a cough effort by providing a positive pressure insufflation followed by negative pressure exufflation to clear airway secretions. It is primarily used in individuals with neuromuscular disease, but its use has expanded to other conditions causing respiratory muscle weakness and impaired cough. MIE can be administered by mouthpiece, mask, endotracheal, or tracheostomy tube. Newer device models now offer an optional mode for airway oscillations to enhance secretion mobilization. In 2021, there were six papers published on MIE. Three were original research for which two had accompanying editorials and there was one narrative review. In the March issue, Sancho and colleagues evaluated MIE with and without oscillations. The aim of the study was to determine if oscillations reduced respiratory infections and the need for bronchoscopy to remove secretions in patients with ALS who required home mechanical ventilation by tracheostomy. They performed a two-year prospective crossover trial that included 19 subjects and used conventional MIE and MIE with oscillations over two six-month alternating periods. They found that the use of oscillations with MIE did not have a significant effect on respiratory infections or the need for bronchoscopy. The accompanying editorial by Swingwood, Shaw, and Rose noted that the evidence for benefit of oscillations with MIE is limited. They explained the rationale for oscillation is to enhance expiratory flow and cilia beat frequency to reduce butum viscosity. And they pointed out previous studies by Sancho that showed oscillations with MIE did not affect peak cough flow, the need for bronchoscopy or tracheostomy placement in subjects with ALS. However, the editorial authors felt there were several limitations that were overlooked in the current study, including the small sample size, and that subjects were described as clinically stable but still had viscous secretions, suggesting that therapy settings may not have been optimized for use with tracheostomy. A narrative review by Anderson and colleagues was published in July. The authors explained that use of MIE with a face mask may be ineffective in individuals with laryngeal or bulbar dysfunction. They reviewed the role of the larynx and how cough is impacted by laryngeal function. It has been demonstrated through CT scan and transnasal fiber optic laryngoscopy that MIE may be unable to increase cough peak flow in individuals with ALS and bulbar involvement. TFL has also revealed signs of aspiration during insufflation in spinal muscular atrophy and myotonic dystrophy. High inspiratory pressures may cause laryngeal closure, so the authors recommend to slowly titrate pressures. In this figure, you can see at an insufflation pressure of 35, the larynx is closed, but at 25, it is open. The authors conclude that MIE settings should be customized for those with upper airway dysfunction. They propose the use of direct laryngeal visualization during therapy to assist with challenging patients. The September issue featured an editor's choice publication by Martinez Alejos and colleagues. It evaluated the effects of MIE used with expiratory rib cage compression in a prospective randomized controlled trial of sedated, invasively ventilated adults. All subjects received rib compression alone and then rib compression followed by MIE. The volume of wet sputum obtained after therapy was the primary outcome. The combination of rib compression and MIE was found to significantly increase the volume of sputum. MIE was also found to produce short-term improvements in respiratory compliance and hemodynamic changes were clinically insignificant. The accompanying editorial by Volpe and Gamerez highlight the challenges of airway clearance in sedated ventilated patients due to the inability to produce an adequate cough peak flow to remove secretions. Ventilation, perfusion mismatch, impaired gas exchange, decreased compliance, and an increased risk of respiratory infection can occur as a result of accumulated secretions. The authors note that since the PEEP setting was 10 or less in the group studied, it isn't known if MIE is safe for those with higher PEEP as they may have more severe impairment of gas exchange. 
It is also not known if the negative pressure from MIE causes pulmonary collapse, which would further impair gas exchange and respiratory compliance. It was noted that the MIE pressures used in this study may not have been optimized for invasive use, and it was suggested to use a higher exhalation pressure due to the narrower internal diameter of artificial airways. The most recent paper published on MIE in 2021 is in the December issue of the journal by Hun, Lee, and Shin. The aim was to investigate the effect of the endotracheal tube on peak expiratory flow generated by MIE. This was a prospective study of intubated subjects receiving MIE via ET tube and then with face mask after extubation. The primary outcome was peak expiratory flow and minus 2.7 liters per second was considered the minimum needed to clear secretions from the tube. 12 subjects completed the study and the authors found that overall peak expiratory flow was increased with the use of face mask compared to ET tube and that pressures of 50 helped to increase the number of trials that reached the 2.7 liters per second minimum. In summary, there were several contributions to the literature on MIE published in the journal over the past year. We learned that MIE with oscillations may not improve outcomes in patients with ALS as compared to conventional MIE. MIE settings may need to be customized in patients with laryngeal or bulbar dysfunction. MIE used with rib cage compression in intubated subjects who were sedated resulted in more sputum compared to rib cage compression alone, and peak expiratory flow is greater when MIE is used with a face mask as compared to endotracheal tube. Thank you for tuning in. You can reach me by email for any questions. Be sure to follow the journal on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube.